Well, it's an exciting weekend for Prince fans in Minnesota as they are marking the 40th anniversary of the film Purple Rain. The movie starring Prince and featuring his music accelerated his career and bolstered the Minneapolis music scene. The tribute concert is one of many events people from across the country travel to Minnesota to see. Our newly crowned King Charles III, whose lifelong passion for the arts we will be celebrating throughout the show. He himself, of course, is a painter, an artist, the artist formerly known as Prince. We've loved him since the 70s, so whenever we can get here, we do. Even in the rain, it's all worth it. Well, the festivities continue tonight with the performance by Morris Day and New Power Generation, and several events are set to take place in Paisley Park tomorrow as well. We have just learned NBC News has one source reporting that Vice President Kamala Harris has chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Walz to be her running mate. He will be the VP's VP. This caps off just about a 16-day sprint to both secure the nomination for Harris and to choose her a running mate. With uh, this pick, she's really going with someone who campaigned as a moderate and comes off like a moderate. Walz's name, meaning family history, family crest coats of arms. The ancestral home of the Walz family is in the German state of Bavaria. The name Walls is an occupational hereditary surname, a type of surname, that was taken from a word describing or common to the profession of the original bearer. It is a name for a man who was a young ruler. The Illuminati is a name given to several groups, both real and fictitious. Historically, the name usually refers to the Bavarian Illuminati, an Enlightenment-era secret society founded on 1st May 1776 in Bavaria, today part of Germany. The society's stated goals were to oppose superstition, obscurantism, religious influence over public life, and abuses of state power. Frederick Trump, born Friedrich Trump, German pronunciation. Fry D.R.E. Trump, March 14, 1869, May 30, 1918, was a German-American businessman. He was the patriarch of the Trump family and the paternal grandfather of Donald Trump, the 45th President of the United States. Born and raised in Kallstadt in what was then the Kingdom of Bavaria, Trump immigrated to the United States in 1885. In 1891, he began speculating in real estate in Seattle. During the Klondike Gold Rush, he moved to the Yukon and made his fortune by operating a restaurant and a brothel for miners in Whitehorse. In 1901, Trump returned to Kallstadt and married Elizabeth Crest. Christoph, thank you so much for being here. I thank told you backstage you. I am in a, a huge fan of yours. And uh, your performance in Inglorious Bastards, I think, ruined, has ruined my marriage. Because every time that I'm movie comes that. on, I can't stop watching it. And I'm always watching you. I loved your performance, as did thank everybody. You. Thank Blue, blue. What's that? Blue, blue. Blue, blue? You interrupted me for blue, blue? <laughs> like a progressive in Minnesota. He passed a billion dollars for affordable housing. He passed a tax credit for low-income low -income parents. He's really been in, in uh, supporting these progressive policies. He campaigned as a moderate, though. He's also a hunter and a gun owner. So with this pick, yeah, he's someone who has sort of taken hold of the youth vote, gotten really popular on the internet. We know that Harris was going with someone who she was hoping would bring her a real electoral bump. With Minnesota, she's not quite getting that. Minnesota has been a reliably blue state since 1972. No one gets away with that but you, Christoph Waltz. Thanks. Uh, quiet. Blue, blue. <laughs> But he can likely appeal to these Midwest voters who might look at him, a former high school teacher as well, as someone who they can relate to. Thank you for being here, though. Thanks it's so a much very exciting. You know what I love me about I love, love about love me. <laughs> for a slip there. <laughs> I can't speak tonight because of the go go. Uh, <laughs> you are such an amazing actor. You're so intense uh, in that movie. You can be so in Glorious Bastards. You're so charming, and then suddenly this dead-eyed stare that you can give that I find so chilling that you're giving me right now. <laughs> Yeah. You're so good at that. Uh, I know that you are, there are, uh, you're from Austria, is that That's correct? That's right. That's right. And uh, there are, like many Americans, unfortunately, I don't know enough about the rest of the world, and I'm, I'm familiar with, <laughs> familiar with Germany, but I don't know the, the difference, say, in the culture between, say, Austrians and Germans. Can you enlighten us? Oh, the difference between Austrians and Germans is like the difference between a, uh, a battleship and uh, a waltz. A battleship and a waltz? That's about the difference between... Really? Yeah. So there's really not a lot of similarities is what you're saying. How are the Austrians Numb. different? I mean, I know there's the, 
The Germans, there's the cliche, which is they have no sense of humor. Do the- That's not a cliche. <laughs> It's just 100% true. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, um, Germans, I, I hope I'm not hurting anybody's feelings. <laughs> No, um, but, but Ger Germans it does go out on television. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Germans might hear about this. No. Well, the, the, you know, they um, won't. They won't hear about this. Please speak freely. It's just, thank you. It's just, we're, it's we're, just us and a exactly. fake moon. Please yeah. speak. Thank you. I think Germans always go for for head-on collision. You know, and, and it's it's never it's it doesn't it rarely has sort of grace and melody and rhythm. It's just the. And, uh, there's I no irony, there's no sense of they just say exactly what they mean. Exactly. I had a COBRA meeting this morning, which was an opportunity that I took to thank the police for their work over the last few days, to express my support for the police officers who have been injured and the communities impacted by this mindless thuggery. Reaction from around the world is pouring in after the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Our MTS Tayeb is joining us now from London. MTS, what has the response been like? What have you been seeing? Hey, Marie, good morning to you. While well, leaders from across the globe, both allies and rivals alike, were quick to condemn the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Now, here in the UK, we've learned that King Charles has written privately to the presumptive Republican nominee. Buckingham Palace said the contents of the correspondence would be kept private, but we understand that the message was similar to that of the UK's new Prime Minister Keir Starmer's conversation with Mr. Trump, in which he condemned the violence and expressed his condolences for the other victims and their their families. Now, other European leaders were also quick to offer their support to Trump, with uh, French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz both wishing Trump a, quote, speedy recovery. Elsewhere, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky posted on social media that, quote, such violence has no justification and no place uh, anywhere in the world. Over in the Middle East, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he was, quote, shocked by the attack, while Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi called it a treacherous incident. Now, over in Asia, where relations between China and the U.S. have been strained in recent years, President Xi Jinping, quote, expressed sympathies for Trump. And finally, in Russia, the Kremlin was more pointed in its statement, casting blame as far as the White House, saying that we do not believe the attempt was organized by the authorities, but that the atmosphere around candidate Trump provoked what is confronting America today. There are a number of actions that came out of the meeting. The first is we will have a standing army of specialist officers, public uh, uh, duty officers, uh, so that we'll have enough officers to deal with this where we need them. The second is we'll ramp up criminal justice. There have already been hundreds of arrests. Some have appeared in court this morning. I've asked for early consideration of the earliest naming and identification of those involved in the process who will feel the full force of the law. And thirdly, I've been absolutely clear that the criminal law applies online as well as offline, and I'm assured that that's the approach that is being taken. Whatever the apparent motivation, this is not protest, it is pure violence, and we will not tolerate attacks on mosques or our Muslim communities. So uh, the full force of the law will be visited on all those who are identified as having taken part in these activities. <laughs> oh, I like your style. <laughs> Good to see you again. How are you? We are different people. We speak different languages. Huh? We have different faces, but inside we are same same. Same, same, but different, but still same. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, thank you. Konnichiwa.
Thank you.